Hello friends, once again, I welcome you all to part 3 of the single best answer series. Again in this video, we are going to look at 5 questions. We'll look at the explanations and then we'll get the right answer. Once the question is displayed on the screen, I will read the questions for you. You can pause the video there and select your choice. Then we'll look at the explanation and see whether we got it right. So without wasting further time, let's start with the first question of the day. What would be the paralytic agent of choice in patient at high risk of desaturation? A 27 year old trauma patient is in the emergency with history of front on high speed collision and head injury. The trauma team plans to intubate him before transfer to the CT suite. The options are ketamine, succinylcholine or succinylcholine, rocuronium, atracurium or pancuronium. You can take the next 10 seconds and decide the answer for yourself and then we'll move on to the explanation. So the answer in this question is rocuronium which is C and if you got it right you can pat your back. The, the question is why is rocuronium the best paralytic agent of choice in patients who are at high risk of desaturation? There are studies that have suggested that it takes an average about two minutes longer to desaturate compared to succinylcholine. So rocuronium rocks and succinylcholine sucks. Let's look a few facts about succinylcholine. Succinylcholine is a depolarizing paralytic agent. It can give rise to muscle twitches. It acts very quickly within eight to 10 seconds. It can potentially cause slight increase in potassium levels. It can increase raised intraocular pressure. Therefore, it would be a contraindication in angle closure glaucoma. Watch out for malignant hyperthermia. Malignant hyperthermia is actually a misnomer. The patient can get tachycardia, autonomic symptoms, high temperature, high, high blood pressure, the reason I call it a misnomer is, you may not get high temperature initially. Magnet hypothermia is an autosomal dominant disorder where there is a problem with chromosome 19. It's quite common in the Manuatu region of the New Zealand where one in every 200 patients do suffer from this disorder. For the hypothermia, you need to give a drug called dantrolene which acts on the rhinodin receptor. If the patient has liver disorder, the level of cholinesterases are decreased and therefore the metabolism of succinylcholine will take a while. And these patients can get a prolonged action of succinylcholine giving rise to prolonged apnea. What are the conditions in which succinylcholine is contraindicated? Yes, you guessed it right. It's rhabdomyolysis crush injuries, burns greater than seven day old, penetrating eye injury, neuromuscular disorders, or a family history of malignant hyperthermia. The other options were ketamine. Ketamine is an induction and analgesic agent. It's not a paralytic agent. It's very useful for procedural sedation and in RSI. Atracurium has a delayed onset as compared to rocuronium, so rarely used in the ED for rapid sequence induction. Also, atracurium can cause histamine release. Pancuronium is very, very long acting. Therefore, it's not needed in the emergency department. My question for you is, can, can you tell what is the method of elimination for atracurium? Let's move on to question number two. As per the Difficult Airway Society Guidelines 2015, what are your options to consider after a successful supraglottic airway device placement? Remove the supraglottic airway device and intubate. Sedate and paralyze the patient further. Do not proceed until tracheal intubation. Call senior anesthetic doctor or wake the patient up. In your anesthesia rotations while performing a RSI on one of your patients, you have inserted the ET tube but your assistant feels that the tube is not in trachea but in the esophagus. 
ETCO2 does not detect any waves and you plan to remove the tube and seek help from your senior colleague. Your senior colleague places a supraglottic airway device successfully which is confirmed with the ETCO2 waveform. So what would you do after so what would you do after successful placement of a supraglottic airway device is the question. And if you have studied closely the difficult society airway guidelines of 2015 it says four things to consider and the four things to consider are as follows stop and think for other options can you wake the patient up intubate the trachea via the supraglottic airway device proceed without intubating the trachea tracheostomy or cricothyrotomy so the answer in our question is wake the patient up let's move on to question number three with regards to the ATLS principles of trauma, what would be the most appropriate immediate step? Obtain a portable chest x-ray emergently, look for barcode sign on POCUS, three-way seal dressing, needle thoracosynthesis, insert a chest drain at a site other than a wound. 37-year-old male is in the emergency department with penetrating chest injury via knife assault. He has a patent airway and has no other evident injuries. On examination, he has reduced air entry with tympanic node and a bubbling and oozing 1 cm wound at the 6th intercostal space. The monitor and oxygen is getting connected and an IV access has been obtained by another team member. So what would you do now? It's a no-brainer. Yes, you got it right. Put a 3-way seal dressing on the open wound and then proceed with a needle thoracosynthesis or inserting a chest drain at a site other than the original wound so the option was so the answer was c three-way seal dressing without further delay let's move on to question number four what is the next best step to manage her condition put two pillows on the right lower back raise her both lower limbs two large bore iv axis and give tranexamic acid Obtain e-fast images, expedite her to the operating room. A 36-year-old pregnant is in the emergency department with a low-speed collision accident. She complains of pain in the neck. Apart from the seatbelt mark seen on the left shoulder, there is no obvious injury seen. Airway is patent and high flow oxygen is attached. Air entry is equal on both sides. While she saturates at 100% with a respiratory rate of 20 per minute, Capillary refill is 3 seconds, blood pressure is low with a pulse of 100 per minute. Let us look at the explanation now. Hypotension in trauma should always be considered hemorrhagic unless proven otherwise. But the immediate management of this patient should be placing a wedge or pillows on one side to displace the body of uterus and relieve the IVC compression. Leg raise in general will be like giving half a bag of isotonic saline to add to the preload but will not help with the IVC compression. IV access and major hemorrhage protocol tranexamic acid will take some time. So the right answer would be put two pillows on the right lower back. And the last question for the day is here. What is the likely pathophysiology producing this ear lesion? Histamine IgE induced hypersensitivity, antigen or antibody cell lysis, contact dermatitis, immune complex mediated hypersensitivity or delayed type reaction. A 24 year old male is in the emergency department with cocaine abuse. He is somnolent and has a black rash on his legs and right ear as seen in this image. His observations are blood pressure 180 by 110, heart rate 145, saturations 96% on room air, on high flow, respiratory rate 22 per minute. He's given 10 mil he's given 10 milligrams of dizepam orally. What is the likely pathophysiology producing the ear lesion? So here we are looking at the types of hypersensitivity reaction. So this patient has taken cocaine, and cocaine is often mixed with a cutting agent called levamisole. Levamisole can induce vasculitis and 
all types of vasculitis are type 3 hypersensitivity reaction that is antigen antibody immune complex mediated whether it is giant cell arthritis or whether it is Henoch-Shan line purpura Kawasaki disease every vasculitis in this world is a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction and will give rise to fibrinoid necrosis type 1 hypersensitivity reaction is the histamine re the histamine release from the mast cells and giving rise to anaphylaxis atopy type 2 is the antigen antibody causing cell lysis seen in rheumatic heart disease or abo incompatibility type 4 is the delayed type of hypersensitivity which you see in mantu test or contact dermatitis that's all for now thank you for watching this video till the end please do hit the like button subscribe to this channel and share this video i will see you soon for the next five questions in this series this week till then stay safe happy studying and peace